So next talk is Debian CD uh, by Steve McIntyre. You all know him, I guess. Uh, Debian CD is part of the release process and a source of a lot of discussion over the years. Are we feature complete? What's missing? What should we be doing in the future? Good. Right. Hey, folks. Again, this is a talk where I want you lot to join in as well. I'm not just talking at you. If, you, if that's what you're hoping for, this is going to be very short. <laughs> so, um, Debian CD is a large, ugly lump of pearl and shell and God knows what code. Um, it seems to work, give or take. We've been producing lots and lots of CDs for many, many years. Um, it's most of, it's the vast majority of what I do in Debian these days. Um, you might have seen there's been some discussion literally in the last couple of days about sizing of CDs. They're just not big enough anymore. Um, we've had long-standing issues uh, for a number of years now just physically trying to make sure that we get a useful GNOME or KDE desktop onto CD1. Um, we're working on it. Wheezy is possibly either going to be the release after we manage to make that work, or if not, it'll be the very last one. I'm quite confident to claim that. Um, <coughs> how many people have we got here? Not a huge number. As out of interest, how many people here use Debian CDs for installation? Yes. <laughs> Okay, how many people here use CD images that we create, whether that's on a USB stick, whether it's on a CD or a DVD or anything? Okay, cool. Right, we have some users. Awesome. <laughs> um, of you lot, does anyone use CD1 or KDE CD1? Again, either on, an, either on a USB stick or on a CD or a DVD or anything? Hands up. One and a half. Two and a half. Oh, is that another one at the back? Oh. <laughs> Do you use KDE CD1 or GNOME CD1 at all? The first CD. OK, that's cool. That, right. So maybe I'm, over, maybe I'm too, too worried about this, and actually we should just not bother with them anymore. <laughs> we'll see. Um, the issue that we have with all, with always with the CDs is Debian is for forever growing. Um, physically trying to get a usable desktop onto CD1 used to be easy. Back in the demo distant past, we fit a minimal GNOME and KDE on the same CD. These days, we're looking at somewhere between one and a half and two CDs to have even a minimal desktop. Do you want to give Noodles the microphone? So I have been paying attention to these discussions on Debian DeVail. The, the main question I haven't seen answered anywhere is how many people only use CD1? How many people yeah. only burn that single CD, never connect to the network, never burn another CD, and, and therefore mm. would actually be disadvantaged by us not having it anymore? And that's a piece of information I... I don't know if that's been yeah. discussed somewhere or we have that, but... We've had that kind of discussion offline a few times. Um, and it's very difficult to get an answer. Um, we, it used to be that we would we we do um, conferences and things, and we would do a CD1 giveaway, or or we'd sell CD1 or whatever, and we'd expect that that to be, would be useful for people. Um, I keep on being told, being assured that actually still doing CD-sized media is useful because of people with really bad net connectivity, either because they're in the third world or because they're living in backwards. Tennessee, like Joey, or whatever, you know, and in those those situations, actually, you want to have a single CD that's useful. It's approximately impossible to find out exactly what the numbers are. I wish I knew more. Daniel, well, microphone. <laughs> Just to clarify. Um, yeah. What's the element of risk if we have an ISO image that's just a bit bigger than a CD? That's like a DVD 
it doesn't fill the whole DVD, but it, obviously it's optimized for people to download it. Um, like if we go from 700 up to 900 megabytes. Well, exactly, that's one of the options. Um, the Ubuntu folks have just done that. Their first CD isn't a CD anymore. Um, the Debian Live images that we've been chipping for the last couple of releases are too big to fit on a, on a single CDR. Um, again, this comes to exactly what the focus should be. Um, I could be quite happily convinced that we do NetInst and then don't bother with CD-sized images. The next one should be DVD. I guess we have some support for that. What, what do other people think? <laughs> OK, BDL reckons the NetInst installs too much. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a weirdo. Let's not, not, not listen to him. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was going to say something similar to your proposal. Um, uh, I, I think with regard to NetInst, I, I like having NetInst and business card because sometimes if I can't, uh, if there's network issues during the install, or I'd like to sometimes be able to install from the NetInst and then reboot, but that's a separate side discussion. Um, for, I, I, I think it would also be useful to uh, more, to, to sort of work on making it easier for people without network to obtain USB uh, thumb drives because even optical drives are becoming scarce on netbooks. Yeah. And uh, if you are in a situation where you don't have network or you're having a network connectivity mm. issue, like only wireless and no firmware or something, uh, you, you may want to be able to give away USB sticks at conferences or sell sure. them to third world via vendors or so forth. Yeah, absolutely. So of course, again, since Squeeze, uh, both the Debian CD, you know, the install of images and the live images, are hybrid, so you can literally just dump them at least for x86 or you know i386 and AMD64. That works for other architectures. I have no freaking idea how to boot off USB. To be honest, I don't really consider that a major issue just yet. Um, one thing I should have said: please, someone or ideally many someones, please take notes in Gobby. We have this up. I'm not taking notes because I'm I'm not trying not to look at the screen. No, that doesn't mean I want rude messages either. <laughs> um, so yes, it's a possibility that we that we could just stop doing CD-sized images. Um, what we've do the other tweak that happened post squeeze, but is happening regularly with the weekly builds for Wheezy, is in fact that the DVD-sized images, well, they're not quite the first the first. DVD in the set is deliberately limited down to exactly four gigabytes, so that that or so jibby bytes, so that will fit on a no sorry I was I was right first time four gigabytes, so it will fit on a four gig USB stick. That being actually probably more common for most people than using a DVD-R for it. Um, if we did consider we don't care about CD-sized images anymore, it's also entirely feasible that we could then say let's have a two gig first image that you can blow to a DVD or you can put on a, on a two gig USB stick. Obviously, we don't want to have a one, two, four, eight, 16, 32 set of options. Um, but I think maybe a one gig, maybe a two gig. Um, one gig right now would cover what we need for KDE and GNOME. So we could carry on with the same setup we have. Um, two would possibly fit both. I don't know. I haven't run the numbers. These are all options. Um, again, let me know what you think. At the back, Mike. Um, well, um, I'm from Salvador. Uh, I live there. We do sometimes um, Debian events in there. Um, sure. Uh, when people come to us and they want a uh, Debian installer, we usually uh, burn a CD because that's the most easy way to install it. And from us, uh, I think it's a necessity uh, to have a CD that includes all the, the, the desktop environment for new users and to um, use the desktop, the Debian desktop, more easily. Uh, that's a comment. Okay. And we've got BDL as well. I mean, the other option is if CD1 isn't big enough for GNOME and KDE, then we could just say you need the first three CDs or something. Um, 
So there's an interesting question. Does it work better for you for that to be a Debian installer style CD1 or is a live boot CD that you can then install from an even better choice? Um, well, um, it worked for us, um, the, the Debian installer first, because um, they already seen the desktop in the event. Um, that's, that's okay. So, sizes is still an open question. Please follow up notes here, mail on the Debian CD list, Debian Devel, whatever. Oh, go on, Daniel. Yeah, I've had a play with the live CDs as well recently. Um, I found it quite useful um, that yeah. I've actually sent, I, I made up some CDs in, in Europe and posted them out to Australia, to South America, to various people. They all got them going instantly. It was an instant success. They dug out old machines and put them in. So uh, there are use cases for these things, but the yeah. question is not so much the technology. I mean, we can do all these things if we really want to, mm -hmm. but maybe the question is more about how to get a bigger survey than just the people in this room. Sure. Um, is that where we should devote the effort mm -hmm. right now? It's, if you have suggestions on how to get more information out of our users, please mail me. Um, I've tried um, talking to various forums, uh, Linux user groups, everything already, and unfortunately the feedback you get is approximately zero. Um, Download statistics are possibly the biggest thing we're missing in Debian, is we can get proportions of downloads uh, um, from some of our mirrors, but we've got, we have very little information to go on for all of the many, many mirrors we don't control, and of course, we don't know how many times a given CD might be used. You know, a, an individual download could then go to an install fest and be 50 machines, or it might get thrown in the bin and never used once. It's, it's a huge amount of guesswork. Regarding the option of having multiple CD for special use case where people want to install offline, what about having a first CD which is net with mm. Uh, the standard package, which is about 250 megabytes, yeah. and then a uh, second CD with just GNOME, and that would be one gigabyte, almost? Again, it's an option. Um, it's something in the past that we've resisted because of the extra complexity involved. Um, it's easier for us to generate a single CD that does everything. It's m also much easier for the users to have put in a single disk and it works. I mean, that's why we started doing DVDs and now Blu-rays as well. I mean, thankfully at the moment, today, the Blu-ray, uh, you, you can fit all of AMD64 or i386 on a single dual, la dual layer Blu-ray. Next week, I don't know if that's still going to be the case. We have too much software in Debian, but we know that. <laughs> Or maybe we don't have enough. It, it's getting very, very difficult to actually to get it to people. The question about download statistics uh, made me think of an idea. Um, it's in the Debian CD context, so I'm mentioning it here, but it has broader applicability. Uh, could Debian actually cons possibly consider commissioning some market research? I know we don't want to do things like phoning home by default and similar things out of respect for our users, but it's not disrespectful to mm. use statistically valid professional or professionals doing statistically valid techniques to actually gather data for us uh, in a yeah. relatively respectful way. Um, related to that, we've had discussions about PopCon. Every release for the last four that I remember. Um, there's all, if we could put something into PopCon to say how a system was installed, we could possibly track that. We know it's it's all useful information. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't talk about user like like flexibility. Like you, you may actually need to ask like questions and words to find out things like yeah. would another option work for you? Um, you know how important is blah sure. and so forth. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, right, we've got lots of CDs. I'm going to move on from that unless there's anything else. Daniel, last quest, last thing. 
Yeah, this this whole thing of collecting user data and popcorn. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a two-edged sword. I mean, it, it can have tremendous benefits and it can be a painful thing for people. Mm. But, I mean, one idea I had this morning at breakfast was that we could um, gather data from people about their old bug reports. So when they've got a new version of a package and they've filed a bug report against an old version, um, then they could be prompted to, um, to close the bug report or to okay. provide more feedback. There's a lot of intelligent things that we could do mm. to reduce manual effort in things like the release process or whatever else. Okay. Um, sure. But, they're all wandering connected. slightly off topic, so if we leave it there. Yeah, it's, it's off topic, yeah. but the whole idea of collecting data, more data than we're collecting now, whether yeah. it's downloads, CD usage, other media, um, mm. bugs, the whole gamut of sure. information. Of course, while not going too far into the big brother state where people are scared and start complaining, you know, I wouldn't be too happy if too much of my system usage was, was shared with the rest of the world. It's a difficult call. I just wanted to qualify a little bit the comment I made earlier about, you know, the problem with NetInst is that it installs too much. It's actually a Debian installer frustration, not a Debian CD frustration. Okay. Um, but, you know, we, we did the biz card size images in an era when there was a physical unit of media called a business card CD sure. that was briefly in vogue and popular and all of that. But the thing that I've always wanted that always caused me to go to NetInst instead of business card was I wanted a unit of stuff which would allow me to take a cold dead machine and as quickly as possible get it to the point where it's booted, it's on the net, it can run an SSHD and I can install exactly what I want on it. Yeah. And so things like automatically pulling security updates for the versions of the packages that were on that mm -hmm. unit of media are absolutely the wrong thing to do because I may not even want to run the version of Debian that that unit of install media was built you just with, want right. a system up immediately that you can do useful things with. Exactly. Yeah. And, and where useful things is defined as, I know exactly what I want to install on it. I want to control mm. that, whether it's bringing all of GNOME 3 and all of its dependencies or whether it's I got five packages I want to install and don't touch anything else is sort of immaterial. Sure. So one of the things I'd love to see come out of this sort of reevaluation of what are the right mm. media unit sizes and so forth to have is that at least one of them sort of meets that criteria of a standalone object that doesn't need networking to complete its processing at all, but the result of using that unit of media is something that can boot and be on a net, run an SSHD, and be able to install other software. Okay. Um, that actually does come back to another question that I ask every time we ever do this talk. Does anyone here use business card images? Or anyone on IRC? If you can talk. So, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Again, the reason I always ask is occasionally people say, yes, 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 it's really important for me. And yet the business card CDs are also far and away the least stable of our, of our least images because they depend on versions matching with what, exactly what's on the archive. Yes, I was going to say the problem I've always had, that every time I've tried to use one, it hasn't actually worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if, given that, I would be tempted to just to remove that frustration altogether and just not bother su supporting them. Okay, fine. If we can minute that, then I've, got, I've now got people backing me up for this for the first time. <laughs> so, cool. Okay. <laughs> Actually, going back to back slightly reorganizing things, the other issue we have is we have, again, far too many CDs. Um, the, the build that happened this morning, I believe for AMD64, for Wheezy, we are looking at a set of 73 CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, no one is ever going to download all of those. If anybody ever does, I want, to, I want to go and find them and, first of all, slap them and say, what are you doing? And get, personally hand them a DVD drive because at least then you get, you get a, you know, a number of discs that you can count on your, on your fingers and toes. <laughs> I mean, we have too many DVDs. We're looking at, I think, 11 maybe at this point for, for Wheezy as well. Um, 
This is something that's come up a few times. In the past, we decided already that for the primary, for the main architectures, which are i386 and AMD64 and source, I treat source as an architecture in Debian CD, it's easier that way, that we do provide every ISO for every possibility. So we have all of those 73 ISO images available for download for HTTP, BitTorrent, we have all of the uh, DVDs available. We, ha we don't do full ISO downloads for Blu-rays because, frankly, the number of people who, who are downloading them is so small that I don't care if we make their lives a little bit harder. We do not need another 25 gigabyte image just because. Um, what is the remaining value in actually producing the ISOs while we can just say to the users, if you really want them, check those there for you? Exactly. So what we've done for the other architectures is we've already switched over to just having, say, we, we will ship the first three CD ISO images, the first one DVD ISO image, and everything else is Jigdo. Um, if people really, really want the other images, again, they can, have, they can have the slightly more hassle instead of just a direct click to download for an ISO image. Um, if I ever get back to it, I might finish Jigdoofus, which was a Fuse-based um, jig do to ISO tool. Um, if we could run that on all the mirrors, that would be really, really cute. Although they'd probably then complain about CPU usage rather than disk usage. It's, you know, it, it's, it's not, it, there, there isn't an easy win. Um, so what I'm considering for Wheezy is switching over to a reduced set of ISO images. I'm assuming no one here is going to complain about that. Oh, Don, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I would just appreciate if we continued distributing uh, at least source on DVD, uh, but I don't, definitely don't want CD images. So if, if the decision was That's just to point. have, yes. <clears throat> yeah, if we, yeah. the decision was just to have real mm -hmm. DVD ISOs so that if for some reason you couldn't get Jigdo to work okay. or yeah. something. Okay. That's cool. But, we can do that CD easily. CD ISOs beyond, I mean, CDs whatever. for source, actually, yes, true, and are not all that useful. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, good point. Thanks. Um, so, fine. I will change the sets available um, to match this. If we drop the business cards, we'll re reduce, f we will produce fewer of the ISOs just because, it, it, if nothing else, it makes releasing faster as well, and we all like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're now at the stage where we are IO bound producing about half a terabyte worth of images on release day. Now that we, know, we got a really, really gorgeous, big, fast build machine, Thomas Crenn sponsored it. I will you know, name drop them because it's really appreciated. We went from spending basically 24 hours on release day just building CDs down to about six or seven. Um, that was a huge difference. Obviously, as time goes on, we keep on producing more and more software in Debian, so it's going to creep up. But actually having a nice, big machine to do that on helps. Okay, a more general question. Yeah. You've mentioned in the past uh, using XZ compression instead of yes. GZIP. Is this something that could help us here? Absolutely. Um, good point. I forgot to mention it in here. XZ is substantially better than GZIP for almost everything we have. Um, we've been talking about it already. Ansgar has been looking at specific numbers for it. <laughs> Using XZ in instead of GZIP saves about 20% of the whole archive. Yeah. We're not proposing a total archive rebuild to switch to XZ because I think, again, the release team will probably murder us. It, it's a release goal. Cool. Okay. Go, go do it. <laughs> yes. We should switch the default, I believe. The issue with doing so, it. So I haven't looked at XZ before. The reason we didn't switch the default instantly to BZIP2 was that it was so uh, CPU and memory uh, expensive on small machines to do the unpack. Is XZ got the same issues, or is it better in that regard? It's better than BZIP2, I believe. Compressing is horrendously, painfully slow. The decompress is much better. So compression is horribly slow. So um, I recompressed the entire archive of, for AMD64 on some 48-core machine. And some packages, like the Linux kernel debug symbols, took 
half an hour. Um, on the other hand, um, decompressing them was faster than gzip on my laptop. Mm. And the memory de usage is also reasonable, I think. It uses yeah. only a few megabytes with the setting that, uh, with the settings that DPKG mm. uses. Yeah. The flip side of switching to XZ is that there is still software out there that doesn't yet support XZ. Um, we've, been, we've had co a constant debate for the last few months about it, specifically to Bootstrap, which, of course, we use in DI. We can trivially change it in DI to support XZ as well. I believe that's already happened. The problem is people don't necessarily want to require XZ if when people are using to Bootstrap on non-Debian systems. Um, I'm not so convinced by that argument. I'm thinking we should just tell the world, look, we've moved on, Ca you know, keep up. Um, if there are any other arguments for it which make, make that not possible, I'd like to hear them, but I haven't heard them yet. Neil? So, I mean, one of the arguments about um, XZ um, slash LZMA slash what version yeah. is, is often on, on other systems. I mean, there's fairly mm. modernish, like I think OpenSUSE 12 and various things recently which have issues with exactly which version of um, XZ mm. utils are, are, are being included. Yeah. So, and including um, the last release of Debian has that issue as well. So depending on where you want to do your Debian bootstrap, okay. that might be an issue there. So we pick a version that we expect people to have sensibly. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So anyway, EFI, I'm not going to mention the SB phrase. Please pretend that, that that never happened. EFI is something that we do have to do in Debian CD, and really, really before we ship Wheezy. Um, it's not going to be too long before it will be difficult to buy machines that do not have BIOS and are going to be EFI only, I expect. Steve? Yeah, so uh, an additional issue there, which actually following the previous um, SB discussion we had a, a hallway talk about was the fact that um, in fact, uh, Debian today on uh, x86 Max boots well because it has no Epi boot support. <laughs> um, we, in, in Ubuntu, we've run into a large number of issues with um, supporting everything on one CD. Uh, Fedora has done it, uh, Matthew Garrett's magic yep. hybrid stuff. So if you expect to be able to have a single CD that boots on Epi machines of all flavors as well as BIOS systems, um, but there's definitely some work to do to, to track down what um, MJG has done and uh, integrate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do need to get EFI working. Um, I presume that's not controversial. Help would be appreciated in terms of testing EFI. Um, I currently don't own any machines that use it, so obviously we can play with the EFI in QMU. Um, but of course, the way the world is with BIOS is and, and EFI is not going to be any different. Every motherboard is going to be different in terms of its quirks and whatever. So I am going to be starting to push out testing images specifically targeting EFI. And I will be mailing, pe mailing the lists about it asking for help. The more testing we can get done on the more different brands of machine, the better. I don't want to be waking up the morning after the release to people complaining, oh my god, Debian's crap, it doesn't boot on my machine. Ah, Steve again. I'm inclined to think we probably shouldn't rely entirely on crowdsourcing the testing. Should we put in a requisition with the DPL to get you some or somebody who's going to do the testing on this, some EFI hardware? Um, it, rather than just relying on it, that, that somebody in the community will do it because they're... Ouch. To be honest, I'm going to end up buying a machine regardless. Don't worry about that. But Well, but that's one machine, and every BIOS well, is different. How many well, do you yeah, need? Sure. Um, that's a very good question. It's something I haven't done research into. Um, to be honest, um, one motherboard from each of the, you know, one motherboard from each of the, co of the common motherboard vendors, two or three different brands of laptop would probably be useful. You know, and obviously, once we know that it works, they don't have to, st they, don't, they don't have to stay around, that we can go and use them for other things. Um, so, yeah, EFI, help, we'll talk about it more. Um, Multi-arch is confusing in Debian CD world. 
in that um, we already have what we've been calling multi-arch in Debian CD, and we had it years ago, well, way before these, these people trying to do it in the archive. <laughs> um, in multi-arch terms in Debian CD, that just means that we have, we will boot on several architectures, and we will start the installer for each of those architectures natively. So the obvious ones are easy, AMD64 and i386. We used to have those multi-arch with PPC until we just ran out of space on the disks, and nobody cared about PPC anymore. We used to have the special that Vorlon came up with, which was the HP one. So we had a single CD that would boot on Alpha and HPPA and IA64. That re required quite a lot of just hackery in the boot sector, but hey, it worked. Um, it was a lovely technology demo, and, and I'd love to think that maybe half a dozen people used it. <laughs> um, that's what we mean by multi-arch in, De in Debian CD at the moment. Um, so the, one of the more common, one of the most useful images that we've made, um, people have told me several times, and I have to believe them, is we have a multi-arch AMD64 and i386 and source DVD, which is the perfect DVD if you want to do giveaways at conferences, all of your GPL requirements are met on a single disk. And, you know, it's, it's a good message to give to people. Here's all the binaries it'll install on your machine, and you have all of the information you need to go with it if you ever want to rebuild anything. That's cool. We like that. As multi-arch, however, we got the beginnings of it in Wheezy. Um, it's confusing to use the same name. Fine, whatever. We had it first. You lot go and change. <laughs> um, Beyond Wheezy, we're going to. We, one of the things that we've been talking about is having uh, partial architectures, or having a CD that doesn't just ne doesn't necessarily contain all of i386 and all of AMD64. But for example, you would have your DVD that contains a basic AMD64 system, and then would have the i386 equivalents that used to be in IA32 libs, specifically. Um, that lot's going to get hard. It's going to get really, really difficult to test. We are going to need support in DI for it. Um, if anyone wants to volunteer to work on that, please do, because as we, we found out in the last talk, and we, we all know, surely, the DI team is struggling for manpower. There are lots and lots of cute things like this where people can make a big difference for DI. Please dive in. Where else did we get to? And yes, the, oh, Neil. Just uh, jumping back slightly, one of the comments from IRC about um, UEP um, is that there's um, some projects potentially around um, UEP test beds, which you can run and emulate stuff. That, that should do oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll so. help. We need to check on real hardware too. Yeah. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention. Um, Finally, 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 it's been a long time coming. Um, I've got some work going right now to start doing regular Debian live builds on the DS8 hardware, which is Peterson, which is the normal CD build machine. Um, Daniel has done an awesome job in the last few years of developing the Debian live, work, the Debian live project. Um, doesn't necessarily have the time when we do releases to be able to get regular releases of Debian Live out at the same time as we do the install CDs. Um, so after, it's been far too long, and I apologize. It's, it's, it's just lack of time on my part. We are going to get regular Debian Live builds alongside the install CDs, starting real soon now with the weeklies. And then when we get the Wheezy uh, main release, we'll start doing it uh, for the Wheezy point releases too. Um, so DSA have helped, helped some with that. Uh, Jimmy is, is volunteering help as well. Um, again, testing for those. I'll be pushing out more information soon. Do we have anything else people want to talk about? Or have I scared you all off? Um, I had a question. Do we, are we still somehow producing a CD that has all Debian on it? Or the Blu-ray to layer? Absolutely. We have the Blu-ray, the double la dual layer Blu-ray still for now. You can get a single disc that holds all of AMD64 or all of i386. Yes. 
I don't know. I said, we are really down to like the last 100 meg or so left of that disc. If the, if the release team let any more stuff into Wheezy, it, it won't fit anymore. But, and do we produce the same for Source? Or is it we also do the same for Source as well, yes. So actually, yes, that, that, that is a nice one to be able to give out. Approximately no one is ever going to burn it because the blank media costs a fortune. But hey, it, yeah, it's an option. Yeah, but just being able to hand Debian <laughs> Source to anyone. Yeah. I said, if we're not careful, though, we'll need a, a dual layer Blu ray and a CD. <laughs> uh, so, with the multi arch thing and talking about doing the IA32 libs equivalent on there, yeah. do we know if the, the, multi, the existing multi arch CD that's AMD64 plus i386 already includes the right set of packages? I have no idea. Okay, because I think maybe it, it would be better to, to try to make sure that that meets yeah. our needs rather than. Doing a whole oh, other sort of image. Possibly, or yeah. I mean, what we do at the moment for the multi arch DVD is we treat it like a normal DVD. We try to get all of the desktops on the. Uh, we try to get all of the desktops for both architectures, which actually works quite well because there's a lot of overlap in the, the binary all packages. Um, I don't know exactly how far down it goes. I must admit, I haven't checked the multi arch DVD to make sure that we have um, all of GNOME and all of KDE on there yet. And, so, and, I'm, and we're back to where we started. <laughs> Anything else? <coughs> cool. I guess not. Well, thank you, everybody, for turning up. Hopefully, that was useful for you as it was for me. Um, please expect yeah, I'm going to be boring you lots more with emails to Debian Devel and cross posted to Debian CD and Debian Boot in the next few months as we get closer to Weed Wheezy. There will be a lot more for you lot to do as well as me, especially when we start trying to test EFI. Thank you very much.